Toxin Psychoanalysis shares topics published in the IPA Society journals and Congress debates worldwide, from the direct voice of the authors to the links to their papers. We hope that this window will allow you to see the depth and breadth of psychoanalytic thought across the world. Far away, so close. Happy listening! This episode was created and edited by Gaetano Pellegrini. Introduction recorded by Frank Andrade. On today's episode, we have the opportunity to hear the voice of Clydeo Eiserich and his essay on the social, cultural, and political events in Brazil and the world. Once again, the serpent's egg asks the author, recalling the Berkman's film that portrayed the period previous to Nazism in Germany. Dr. Eiserich is one of the most prominent psychoanalysts of her time. He's a full member, training, and supervising analyst at the Porto Alegre Psychoanalytical Society, professor emeritus of psychiatry at the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul. Dr. Eiserich is a former president of the International Psychoanalytical Association and Federation of Psychoanalytic Societies of Latin America. He received the Sigourney Award in 2011. He has published several books and his main areas of interest are on theory and practice of psychoanalysis, the process of aging, and the relationship of psychoanalysis with culture. In the paper entitled Once More, The Serpent's Egg, originally published in the Psychoanalytic Observatory of the Brazilian Psychoanalytic Federation, I begin describing a visit I paid to Auschwitz in March 2018. I report here the horror that one lives throughout this experience. The entrance gate with the creepy and perverse phrase works sets you free, the lines of visitors reminding the line of prisoners at their death's path, the gloomy brick buildings, each scenery of human degradation and the human evil, evil gas chambers, and mainly the cold, a horrible cold that remem remembers us the cold of death. Hannah Arendt identified the banality of evil and in her view the concentration and extermination camps of the totalitarian regimes serve as laboratories in which the fundamental belief of totalitarianism is that everything is possible is confirmed. So these camps are destined to the degradation of human beings and they also serve to the terrible experience of eliminating spontaneity as this expression of human behavior. André Green, the French analyst, highlights that the cold and cruel monster of destructiveness joins the most traditional figures of evil. Evil is insensitive, some other people's pain. It ignores the suffering of others, and on the contrary, it feeds it, therefore showing its narcissistic origins. Green regarded the Holocaust as the most complete and finished form of evil, as it corresponds to an evil that is born from the de-objectalization due to the death instinct. Therefore, the sadism impresses less than the efficiency of its productivity. 
cruelty seems less terrible, the enthusiasm for order in the systematic extermination of other human beings. In short, in my view, Nazism and everything and everyone connected to it is a cruel denial of human values and ethics, two essential pillars of democracy and psychoanalysis. Then I mention that the Brazilian minister of education, Weintraub, compared an operation of the federal police against some suspects of financing demonstrations against democracy and the Supreme Court, and also of spreading fake news to the infamous Crystal Night. This Crystal Night was a pogrom organized by the Nazi government against German Jews in 1939 which was the destruction, breaking of glasses, burning of shops, synagogues, killing of more than 1,000 people, and incarceration of 30,000 people in concentration camps. This was the beginning of the persecutions to the Jews, culminating in the death of 6 million people, and many more millions of other people under the Nazi regime. Shortly after that, there were in Brazil and internationally many protests and many Brazilian citizens, and among them many analysts, also presented their protests, because if we have a minimum of historical notion, ethics and decency, this kind of comparison is unacceptable and it's an indignity. And then I describe another concerning situation that we live currently in Brazil, which is the use of Nazist symbols. Since uh, plain lies, for instance, saying that Nazism is a leftist movement, or using excerpts from Goebbels' speeches with Wagner's music on the background, or comparing the use of social distancing as prevention of contamination by coronavirus with concentration camps, or using the infamous motto, work sets you free, and so on, and so on. A few days after these events, a group of people in black clothes, horror movie masks and torches protested in front of the federal Supreme Court. court. And in the day after, the president of Brazil participated in an uh, act against the Supreme Court, riding a horse. So this produced a lot of uh, reactions. For instance, the dean of the Supreme Court who compared Brazil in this moment of our history with Hitler's Germany, saying that uh, we uh, were living again what was shown, we were living again what was shown in Ingmar, Ingmar Bergman's film the serpent's egg, which portrays the origins of Nazism in Germany. Adorno 
in his essays on social psychology and psychoanalysis, examined some aspects of the fascist propaganda, highlighting that it is usually personalized, glorifying action, religion, and patriotism, offering the masses the fulfillment of their desires, and mainly, despite all its misguided logic and fantastic distortions, is something consciously planned and organized. The fascist agitator, says Adorno, is usually an accomplished salesman of his or her psychological defects. Aiming at an unconscious identification of his or her followers. And it's very typical that he or she boasts that they were athletic heroes in their youth. The typical fascist leader is often called hysteric, but the fact is that they act vicariously for their disjointed listeners in doing and saying what they would like but are unaware or dare not to do so. So Hitler, according to Adorno, was accepted not despite his cheap peculiarities, his false intonation and his antics, but precisely because of them. And something very important, destructiveness and aggressiveness are a psychological foundation of the fascist spirit. So I consider after that, that this is a time of darkness and concern. In my view, all these series of allusions to Nazism, as well as the succession of acts, daring aggression against journalists and the press, threats to the Congress, to the Supreme Court, to governors and mayors, alongside the most absolute indifference to the tragic reality of the pandemic that threatens Brazilian population, is, it is found, is, there is a, here a striking resemblance to the characteristics described by Adorno on how fascist regimes act and to the appropriate manifest of the dean of the Supreme Court. In my view, we are living in our country a double and terrible threat. On the one hand, the horror of COVID-19 and the government demobilization of the ministry that tackled it bravely, and the attacks on governors and mayors who struggle with the resources they have. When I am recording this, Brazil is already the second country in the world with the highest number of cases and death people. And it's possible that this is continuing to become the first one, considering the lack of action, of concern, of activity of the federal government. So this is producing a growing national mobilization against the virus of fascism, which shamelessly shows more every day his sinister and threatening face to democracy. It's a moment in which the Supreme Court, the press, and many associations, professional ones, and many other, the most important ones, here included the psychoanalytic main federation 
and its component societies are united in order to clearly challenge, denounce, criticize this threat to democracy and at the same time the lack of a program of activity, a joint course of action against the COVID-19. So at this moment, there is a growing national mobilization by all available means and above political differences to defend our democracy and our institutions. A remarkable fact that so far never happened was that all living former presidents of Brazil persons who belong to all different ideological uh, places in the political spectrum expressed their support to the Supreme Court. And this is something in which uh, it's a specific moment that many analysts in the psychoanalytic observatory and elsewhere are raising our voices in defense of human and ethical values, without which it's impossible to be psychoanalysts and to develop our discipline and against the threatens daily ones that lead us to the risk of relieving the horrors of Nazism and fascism. In short, <clears throat> this paper had as an objective to show something that is not very usual in our psychoanalytic community in times of danger, to show that Brazilian psychoanalytic community is openly, clearly, and consciously standing <clears throat> in defense of democracy, in defense of public health of our population, in support of health professionals who are working with full dedication against <clears throat> COVID-19. And I think that in this specific historical moment, psychoanalysis needs to be side by side with all other areas of independent thinking and in defense of the values that are the basis of our profession and our office. <laughs>